you want, guys want to hear about what's the biggest things that impact your biome? So food being number one, the biggest thing that I see in trend-wise is vegetable consumption. So what the science is saying is to have an optimal gut microbiome, you've got to have at least 30 to 40 plant foods per week. Wow. Yeah. Different. And, different. Hmm? different. Different plant foods. So how often do we have cucumber, carrot, tomato, and then we recycle that every day? Like what I invite you to do is go to the supermarket and try something you've never tried before. You know, things like okra or dr the drumstick plant. I'm not sure people do that. There's lots of good science saying that the mucilage in that product feeds the biome. The other important part of having lots of vegetables is fiber. And fiber is really the key to having a healthy biome. So you'll see things cropping up in terms of you know, blog posts and, and scientific literature talking about short chain fatty acids. Has anybody heard of that? Butyrate. But what happens is the, the bacteria actually, they're able to use this as a food source, but then the gut cells are also able to use this as a food source as well. So that's very important. And we'll touch, I'll touch a little bit now on leaky gut. Is anybody familiar with leaky gut, what it is? I'll get a volunteer to tell me what your perceptive is, perception is on leaky gut. Okay. Um. It's, it's very common and you know what, now we're seeing this incredible spike and it's becoming very apparent in terms of the science, what we call modern disease. Things like diabetes, you know, cancers on the rise, a lot of these Hashimoto's and all these, these autoimmune dysfunctions that we're finding that we never had in the past. And a lot of it is because, pretty much because of the in industrialization of food. You know, it went from point probably 70 years ago when we were preparing fresh food. We're still almost agrarian type people, you know, farming, having sort of fresh farm foods. And now we've put that power into the, I guess, the hands of others in terms of, you know, having convenience. Well, so, so what happens is those, what we call gut epithelial cells become almost inflamed because what happens is above the epithelial lining of the cell is what we call mucin. So it's a protective layer. And gradually through degradation, the wrong type of foods, a lot of chemicals, that cell, those two cells get further and further apart and things like allergens and chemicals can leach through and go directly into the blood and then it triggers an autoimmune response from the body which creates things like allergies, Hashimoto's, et cetera, et cetera. So this is all precursors of having an unbalanced microbiome, sickness and infection, cancers, malnourishment. We live in the Western world with an abundance of food, but yet we're malnourished. We have to pop, you know, vitamin pills, we need to put vitamins in, in our breads and all that to, to, to get the vitamin levels back up. It's because we're not actually utilizing it properly because the gut bacteria are the ones, the main little factories in the body that actually help you to unlock the nutrition and produce vitamins for you. Obesity and weight gain, we all know this, you know, diabetes, diabetes diabetics, you know, all the stuff happening around us, lack of energy, depression, poor skin, inflammation, allergies, other gut issues, flatulence. So how do we acquire a microbiome? It's pretty much from your mum. So my biome would have come from my mum. It's pretty much when you're born. <laughs> Thanks mum. <laughs> So when you're born, as you travel down the, the birth, birthing track, you get the coding of biome. So to answer your question, if your mum's in dysbiosis, you will inherit some form of dysbiosis. So that's the, the one that you inherit. And then the other part is from your lifestyle choices. So that's when you get the initial seeding from your mum. Then for mums that are breastfeeding, the mums produce a compound called human milk oligosaccharide. Has anybody heard of that? Human milk, you've heard of it? So it's not for the mum, it's not for the baby, and guess what it's for? <laughs> it's for the baby's gut bacteria. And yeah, specifically strains like bifidobacteria, which we know that are good gatekeeping, holistic type of bacteria that, you know, unfortunately a lot of people are deficient right now. Then as this child starts to, to grow up, they start to interact with pets, the environment, streams, nature, and they start to develop, around the age of three, their own individual biomes. 
And then the most fundamental part is, is food. So the foods that you eat will significantly impact the types of bacteria. So the other thing that's typically carried in food, in how we consume food, is what we call xenobiotics. Has anybody heard of xenobiotics? So xenobiotics are chemicals that are in our, our, our sphere, you know, whether it's food or, or things that we drink, that can impact the bacteria. The most significant one is going to be something like an antibiotic. Does anybody want to guess what the biggest source of antibiotics are in our food supply? Yes, Bob? Our meat. A meat. Yes, spot on. Now what happens with meat production is that antibiotics are used quite indiscriminately because what they worked out a long time ago is if you give the cattle or whatever it is, chickens, antibiotics, they produce more mass. So it's a commercial reason why they, they add it. So if you get more muscle, it's more profit with the companies that are involved. Unfortunately, the antibiotic use is like dropping nuclear bombs in your gut. Because what happens, and studies have shown, that a five-day course of antibiotics can wipe out a third of your biome. Some species will never get back. So think about if you're really sick, take the antibiotic. It's important, it's a very important part of modern civilization. But if you don't need it, if you, if you can fight what you're fighting without it, I highly recommend you consider that option too. So antibiotics are a huge, huge part of it. And I, I've seen this recently. I've just gone through a, a stool profile and it was an elderly lady and she had just, she was suffering from pneumonia and she'd gone on a massive course of antibiotics. And when I looked at her diversity profiling, in stool analysis, diversity profiling is one of the most important parameters. And, and what science is saying is we need a diverse microbiome, as much as we can, as diverse as we can, to sustain a healthy ecosystem. It's like any ecosystem that you think on the planet. The soil, the rainforest, anything. As soon as we start getting a few species dominating, it's out of balance. The same thing with the, with the biome. And this lady had the lowest diversity score I've ever seen. She practically had 99.9% .9 Firmicutes. Is anybody familiar with Firmicutes? It's just a group of bacteria, but she had nothing else, just all Firmicutes. And this is just from nuclear bombing her gut. So it's really significant. And the highest, the highest gut diversity of, I've seen, a guy had an incredibly, incredibly diverse gut microbiome. And guess what his job was? This got me really excited. <laughs> Very close, very close. He was a forester. He was a forester, but he was spending lots of time in, in nature. So he was cons consistently getting inoculated with good bacteria just based on his profession. And that's the highest I've seen. So there's a two really opposite ends of the spectrum. Food additives, hormones. Now food additives, you think about it this way. A preservative is added to a fruit product. This is something I understand very intimately because I was a technologist actually doing this. So a market will come to you, you need to produce a food product, you need X, Y, Z shelf life. What am I gonna to do to get this shelf life? The most effective thing to do is to put a preservative in the product because you've got this long supply chain, you've got to send it out to you, 150 stores, will come. I'm not gonna say the name of the supermarkets, <laughs> might sue me, but you put it out to the supermarkets, but guess what a pres how a preservative works? Want to guess? <laughs> Kills bacteria. So when the food is preserved in this way, the preservative still is interacting with your body and in with your gut microbiome and then killing off your gut bacteria. So it's not like you know you have the food and then the preservative mag magically disappears. It's, it's still in there. So be very mindful of you know, the type of foods that you're choosing in terms of you know, e-numbers, additives, and that's why I highly recommend the second part of my diet recommendation, aside from the vegetable consumption, is going back to really clean eating, like how we used to, you know, really pure, finding a farmer's market, reducing our reliance on packaged foods or pre-packaged foods, preparing from scratch. And I get it, it's hard, it's hard. It's, we're time poor, but I, 
I highly recommend it's a good investment to learn how to prepare your foods for your own from scratch and know exactly what you're putting it and really nurturing that biome garden that you have.